Yo, 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 yo. All right. Well. Well, 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 well. Let me first start by saying... You are listening to the sounds of Berlin and New York today. Got some good stuff installed. We are going to build interesting stuff. Um, first things first, what we need to do is ensure that we are actually going to place the right parts onto our synthesizer. Um, but let's go over what we are doing today. I'll just move this up a little bit. Just a little bit out of scope. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, random question, what is the purple and black key up the top of the screen? Purple and black, this one. That, I'll show you, give me a sec. That is a artisan, a robot artisan. And it's the Tyro colorway. And this guy's called the Immortal because he's kind of half a robot, half not. Come on camera, don't do that to me. Um, yeah, so that's an Immortal Artisan keycap by Brocaps. All right. All right, all right. So, this is what we are continuing today. It is partially built. The power supply over here is built and tested. The oscillator is built and tested. The reason for this is when I built my first kit, this one, which is basically the finished product. Well, this is the finished product of what we're gonna be doing today, but we're only gonna be doing one section today. They do take time. Um, I had a bunch of issues with, so I got up to uh, this section that we're doing today, the VCF, the filter, but I had a bunch of issues, not a bunch. Uh, basically what happened was and the only reason I worked this out was by building the second one up until the point. There's a diode, this diode here, the little orange and black guy. Um, I had basically a fried diode and it wasn't shorted to ground and it wasn't shorted uh, and it wasn't fully opened at the same time. It's supposed to be passing through um, Point, so without any power going through meter in diode mode, it's supposed to be passing through about 0.7 volts. And what had happened was some uh, a power spike while I was doing some testing caused this diode to basically fail. And this section here, this power supply section basically is supposed to bring in nine volts here, push it up into this special coil, which is effectively like a little transformer. Out of this coil, we go from nine to 15, and then we regulate back to a specific voltage here, which is our digital and our analog sides. This little op amp here is gonna give me 11.97 volts on the digital side and 5.33 on the analog side. 5.33 is used to drive the oscillator in the analog section and the not, and the 11.97 is used to um, drive the digital section of the whole synthesizer. So when this diode failed, due to it not completely failing shut, on this point here, I was only max reaching nine volts and I was reaching only about 1.22, 1.3 on the uh, on the 5.33 rail. 
that in turn meant that the oscillator wouldn't start and nothing else in the digital section would properly fire off. None of these ICs would properly work. So I had to build it up into this point but kind of use it as a bit of a reference to understand exactly where I was having the issue. Um, so yeah, this is our power supply section. This is our oscill oscillator. This oscillator section drives a saw wave and a square wave. And I guess either now or in a little bit, what I can do is show you exactly on the oscilloscope what that kind of looks like. Um, because understanding how this thing kind of works is pretty key to the kind of sound that it produces. Um, so these transistors within here, um, this saw, the, the transistors around here create a saw wave and the, saw, and the square wave is generated from that. This switch here switches between a, a saw and a square. This part here is the frequency of that exact saw or square wave. So we can shift it up or we can shift it down. We can make it go to, you know, in essence, go lower octave or go higher octave. Um, so actually before, I'm not gonna, I won't whip out the oscilloscope just yet. It is set up good to go. Um, but what we'll do is let's prepare exactly what we need for this new section. So today we're gonna be building this section here. This is the filter. Um, and to build the filter, we've probably got about uh, at least 50 plus parts or something like that to put in. And then we've got to do some tests. Um, so we basically follow a bill of materials um, and that bill of materials, I'll bring it up just quickly so you guys can have a look. Uh, sec. So we go to here. What you can see is the bill of materials. Um, thanks dude. Yeah, this fluxion stuff's really awesome. So fluxion's from um, Berlin and it's mainly like dub techno, um, really nice stuff. I've been listening to him. Bringing out the bomb, baby. Yep, bombs are on the screen. Um, yeah, so the bill of materials, I don't really see it that well behind chat and stuff like that. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, but each of the sections um, are in different sheets and each of them relate to exactly what parts you will need to place on these actual sheets. So at the, at the RE303 side, we're basically doing a comparison to exactly what the original synthesizer was, the TB303. Um, and the bill of materials is going to A, help us place all of those parts correctly, but B, match one-to-one uh, -one exactly what the real TB303 was, which is in this column F over here. So what I do when I build these is basically, the first thing I like to do when I get to each of the sections is I'll grab all the resistors, so, and I'll grab all the capacitors because they're usually the first things that you're gonna put on. So let's have a look at what we've got here. So I'll just flip back over to our mainstream. All right, so let's take the capacitors away just for a second. Jonas, welcome, thank you. You just came in perfect timing. We're just going through the build materials for this synth. Um, we're up to the VCF section. We're gonna grab the resistors that we need. I got in my hand, then we'll do the caps, then we'll do the transistors, uh, and then we'll do the ICs. So what I usually do with this, I'll flip back over to the, um, to the other side, is I like to color uh, row A with the actual, so I color it orange when I find the part in my pile and then I color it in green once I've actually placed the part onto the, um, onto the synth. So first things first, well, we can grab some diodes too, but we'll grab that last. We've got the resist capacitors in hand. So R95 is already placed on this, um, 
on this synth already. R95 was placed at the start because we need to be able to bring in 11.97 volts um, from our power section into this section. And to do that and to test it properly, R95 needs to be a part of that. So if we zoom back into here, I might be able to zoom a little bit better on this too. All right, so if you can see just there is R95. So that resistor's already been placed. Um, so we don't need him for now, so I've colored him off already. Um, but what we'll do is we'll grab the other stuff. So if we go back to the bill of materials, we need seven resistors. So what I'll do first is we'll go down in sequence and we'll mark off um, each one one by one. So we need a 2.2K, uh, seven of those, 2.2K resistor. So what do we got here? 1Ks, hundreds, 22s, 3.3s, 1.8s, 47s. Need 2.2, where are you? 2.2, 120, 15, 47, 470, 68, 680, 10 ohm, 33, 100 and all right here's 2.2 so the easiest way to make sure that it's all good is that on the mauser bomb matt this is all purchased from mauser um the part number is 291 2.2krc we need seven of these so we'll put those to the side for now and we'll mark that off as orange i'm not going to take all seven out now because when we go back through so cycle through the bomb again when we start placing is when everything starts getting marked off. So I found like this way is probably like, it makes the most sense when you do this because you keep everything sort of nice and neat and organized. Um, so let me fly through this a little bit faster. Uh, so 22, we, we have some 22s on there, 22 KRCs. We'll mark this guy off. And we'll put him to that side. 220s, yeah, we got some 220s. Mark that guy off. Um, some one ohms, no, we don't need him. Some 10Ks, yeah, we got a lot of 10Ks to put on. We'll take him into the good pile. Uh, 100K, yeah, we got six of him to put on. Uh, 33s, no 33s. 10 ohms, no 10 ohms. Uh, 680 ohms, no 680 ohms. Uh, 68K, no 68K. Well, actually to make this really easy right now, we, we only need resistor R46, which is a 47K. So we can just skip everything to my 47K, which is 47K. All right. So there's, there's the resistors that we need. So we take our don't need pile, put that away. Take our need pile and let's put that to the side nice and neatly. All right, so there is our, today King Cag, how's it going bro? There is our resistors. Now we need to find our capacitors um, and same deal. Uh, let's go back to bomb. So we need, what is that? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six glasses of capacitors. Jonas, thanks for the follow, brother. Appreciate having you here. What does the name Gonars come from? Gunars, Gunars, Gonars, Gunars, Gonars. I don't know, you let me know. Um, all right, so we need a bunch of capacitors. What do we say? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, all right. So let's go down the list. These two, I know what they are. They're 10 microfarad, 16 volt, I think. Um, I needed some spares when I took inventory, so I put these in. And that's a 183, which actually I think we do use a 183 in this. Yeah, we do. So when I ordered this bomb, some of the, because some of the parts from Mauser um, aren't in stock all the time, but I did have this capacitor. Uh, good to go already. So 
that's our 183, which is C18. So we'll mark him off. Uh, let's forget about him for a moment. So 10 microfarad, 16 bolters. Well, yep, we need two of him, but he's going in the okay pile. Um, and we'll mark him off. Yep, all right. Uh, 47s, no 47s, he can stay here for now. Uh, 104 JTP, uh, we do need a 104 JTP, so this is a 0.1 microfarad. Um, um, not ceramic cap, what do you call these? Uh, electrolytic capacitor. Um, so we do need one of him. Well, they call them a film cap. Sorry, that's a film cap. Uh, these are electrolytic capacitors. Uh, so we'll mark him off. Uh, we need a triple three. So we need an A333 KTP. Um, what else have we got here? 2.2s, no. I need 2.2 ones. Do need a one. That's a 35 volt one. Probably. Oh, they're tantalum capacitors. So I know we don't need those for now, but we do need 50 volt electrolytics. Uh, 0 0.047s. I don't see any of those. Uh, 10 volt, 1000 microfarad. Don't see any of those. 100 microfarad. Don't see any of those. Uh, 100 microfarad, 6.3 volts. Don't see any of those. We need 147 and triple three. Wait, did we mark off triple three already? Yeah, you know, we marked off 104. All right, where are we at? Uh, KTP3A, nope, don't need those. All right, here's our triple three, just to make sure. So it's 2A333 KTP. Yep, we need three of those. Those in the good pile. 0 0.06, 0 0.0068, we don't need any of those. 10 microfarad 16 volt, we've already got some of those. Oh, that must be my other spares. Uh, let's just double check that actually. So we don't want to put the wrong, but that's a 1016, 100 MMD. Yeah, now we've already got the right one there. Um, a 102 KCP, we do not need. A 3TP, 3TP, 3TA, which no, we do not need. Uh, all right, we are missing a couple here. Why is that so? Back to the file. That's a one volt. We do need a one volt 50. Okay, so we found that. That's good. And we are basically missing a 47 microfarad 16 volt. So let's fly through this quickly. No 47s yet. No. Hundreds. No. But 0.47. 4716. All right, we went past him. So he's 470 MMD, MDD, sorry. All right, cool. That's all of our caps. Now what we need to do, so we'll mark him off. And let's have a look at what else we need to get into here. So let's go through our transistors next. Well, we need diodes. So I'll quickly grab some diodes and then I'll grab the transistors that we need because we need a fair few of them. Some of them here on column D are marked rare. These had to be, so they're new old stock. They had to be ordered in from different places, mostly eBay. Um, there are guys that put together the rare kits, the rare parts kit for the um, for this synthesizer. Um, and they'll supply you with every part that's marked rare because they've already gone to the trouble of sourcing it. Some of those are actually really quite difficult to source. Um, so if you blow them, or some don't work, uh, it kind of makes things a little bit more of a pain to deal with. But give me two seconds, I'll go grab our transistors and the diode. All right. So this is what we got. We'll put the diodes, this, actually let's do the diodes first because there's only one and they're 41, 48, so it's just really common diodes. So you can go in the good pile, the other diodes away. 
And these are our transistors. So let's have a look at what we got here. These are a couple of pretty rare transistors. They're actually uh, essentially the same transistor, um, but one's made by one company and one's made by the other. So they've got different markings, but they essentially are exactly the same transistor. Um, and then we've got a whole bunch of other transistors. I've gone through the hassle of already marking out exactly what we need because in the 303, as you'll see, go back to our bomb. So in the 303, as you can see, there is 536s um, and 945s. We just hopefully. Hopefully I'm still alive. This had an internet hiccup, which is really damn annoying. Uh, anyway, let me know if we're still live, anyone in chat, because that would be pretty annoying if we're not. Oh, good. Yes, man. Either I've got a bad cable. Uh, it can't be the new Nick that I put in because that's literally brand new. I know the Nick on my motherboard has like mad issues because Intel decided, sorry, Asus and Intel decided that they were just gonna leave bad Nicks in there. Uh, hey, Rutherbland, thanks for that. Thanks, Gonars as well. Um, yeah, so it's, be, it's super rare, but sometimes I get like tiny micro dropouts, which is very annoying, especially when you're streaming, anyway. All right, so yeah, back to what I was saying. See these 936s? Um, and inside the TB303 column, they're referenced as 936s. But in my rare parts kit, we go to 936s, they're actually referenced as C1815. So essentially, that's the same transistor. Um, probably made a little bit later. Um, and... This is the replacement that we'll be using. Now, whether or not that produces exactly the same sound at the end of the day, the dynamics, the frequencies, the voltages required, it should be, and when I say should, I'm 99% sure, and the general consensus is these will be a exact one-to-one -one match of the other ones. Um, and you guys will see when we finish this thing, I've already finished the other one, you'll see it sounds exactly like the real thing. It's literally indistinguishable. Um, so we do need some 936s, so let's mark those off. We need a bunch of those. And we need some 733s. All right, we got those here. Mark those off. We need a 2291, which I'm pretty sure is inside this 1518, uh, sorry, this 1583. I'm just gonna keep that to the side as well because I'm pretty sure it's in there. And as well as the other 1583, which we need as well. So we've got all of our transistors and we don't need this. That's, that's fair of a regulator, but we don't need that. All right, cool. So we don't need these transistors at this point. Those to the side. All right, so we've got our resistors, capacitors, transistors, diodes. Now we need... Hey, yes, Bob, thanks for the follow, man. Sorry, I didn't get around to that. I've just got the other screen open, uh, but thank you. Appreciate it. Nice spreadsheet. It is a nice spreadsheet. <laughs> it's, just a bill of, um, it's just a bill of material, um, which is going to help us go through building this bad boy. Um, so we've almost got all the parts we need. And then what we can do is set up and start to actually get some of the parts in. All right. Uh, we'll leave these trimmers, potentiometers, actually may as well grab them. I'll go get them now. All right, here's some trim pots. Oh, sorry, here's some potentiometers. And here are some trim pots. And there's a jack in there as well. So we do need a couple of those. We need VR3 and VR5. 
and VR4, which we do have in hand. Um, and we need Trimpot 3, which is a 500k resistance Trimpot, which is a 504 designation. So there's our 504. It's 500k. That's what we need. All right, cool. So we have every part that we need. So step one is make sure that we've got every part. We just did that, which is fantastic. Get this slide. All right, step two. So here comes the fun part. This is the fun part. This is where we start to make things happen. All right, so we'll start with our resistors because there are a bunch of them. Now, I'm not doing this by complete guessing. Uh, obviously on the silk screen itself, there is the designations of where everything is. Um, as you guys can see, so you'll be able to know exactly where things need to be placed. But there is a, uh, a build guide as well. Um, build guide is, let me get that up quickly. Yeah, it's all through whole components. Um, oh, so interestingly, there is one SMD component. There is a, so when we build the VCF, the voltage controlled amplifier, on that section, because it's literally impossible to get the originals, unless they're on the second-hand market, the original IC used by Roland. Hey, Ichikoop, thanks for the follow, bro. Appreciate it. Um, just to catch you up quickly, we are building a synthesizer. Um, we've just gone through the bill of materials for the voltage control um, filter section, and we're just about to go and play, play some parts on there. Um, yeah, so that that SMD, um, which we'll, we'll have to do a little bit of SMD soldering on this as well, um, is going to be a little... I'll grab it quickly, I should be. Uh, where did I put it? Actually, you know what? I can show you on the other one. It's gonna be way easier because I think I put it else. So, on this, let's go back to our full screen here. So can you guys see this little add-in board? This is a one-to-one -one replica of the same VCA voltage control amplifier chip um, that costs pretty much close to about $100 to get the originals off eBay because they're so rare to actually get. Um, someone created, recreated this with all um, discrete ICs. And if you can see the little white part, that's a tiny little trimmer. Let's zoom in a bit, see what we can do here. So you can see that's a tiny little trimmer and right next to that, so that's SMD and right next to that, you'll see a little solder blob Try and get it in there. That little solder bob is a resistor that I swear to God is literally half a grain, not even half a grain of rice. Like it's like a rice piece cut up into about five. Um, yeah, it's really, yeah, yeah. Basically I've got a whole bunch of flux and that's exactly how I did my last one. The problem is like you got to get the tweezers and then you got shaky like I got a little bit of a shaky hand sometimes when you're doing really small parts and, but I find like I flux at first, once I flux it, I tin the uh, pads a little bit and then do my best to hold my breath while I put it down there and actually solder it on. But yeah, we got this one on there and working and um, yeah, it does its job. So only a little bit of SMD that we need. All right, uh, so there's our trim pot. Now, let's get set up so we can actually do some soldering. I'll chuck my soldering pan on. Um, well, actually, I mean, we can do a, we can do a quick oscillator test just to see everything's up and running and doing exactly what it should be. So before we place some parts, let's get this to sort of side for a second. And this is where things get a little bit no. Oh yeah, I was like, as Bob's, as soon as I was like, if I drop this thing, there is zero chance I'm gonna find it on the floor. Like literally zero, it is so tiny. Um, when I pulled it out of the packet, I was like, holy crap, like this, like I couldn't barely even see it inside the actual SMD packet. Um, all right, so yeah, let's do a little oscillator test. And just so you guys can see exactly, I guess where we're up to in this point. Um, so, 
we have, let's get our scope up, make the scope a little bit bigger and we'll bring him sort of into the front a little bit, you guys can see. So the scope is currently hooked to my computer and it is generating just a basic square wave at a certain voltage. Um, that's just for testing the scope. So what we're gonna do is we'll get our multimeter out and we'll do, I'll take you through, I guess the first couple of tests that you need to see um, working for there to be 5.33 and um, 11.97 volts. So let's have a look. So there's our, get a little light on him so it's easier to see. There's our multimeter. Now let's take some power, get some power into here. All right, and good day, Cheetah Tech, best followers, primes, and viewers on mainstream. I think you're a bloody bot, mate. That's really sad. I'm gonna have to freaking ban you, man. That's so bad. Crazy ass bot. Uh, but Chick Tech, see you later. Get Rex Scrub. <laughs> Damn, man. They're like. I think that's my first one, so whatever, it happens. All right, so if I'll run you through exactly, so let's go to, uh, let's flip over to here just quickly and I'll show you where the tests actually occur. So this is the, um, the oscillator test that we need to run, but we'll run that in a second. But if we flood back to this point here, um, this is testing our 5.33, Line, and then we're going to test our 12 volt line after that. So if we float back onto the big camera, maybe I can zoom in a little bit here too. Bring this up just a little bit. Bring this in just a little bit. That's a bit better. Uh, yeah, dude, I've had this for so long, man. It is like an absolute workhorse. Um, I think I've had it for like, at least 14 years or something. It's such a good, uh, such a good device. All right, so power's coming in. We want to hit ground and we want to test. We've got voltage coming in past the coil to the off amp, but technically, to find our 12 volt line, we have to test this little jumper. It's actually really hard to see on the camera, but if we test that jumper, we can see we've got 11.8 ish volts coming through there. Um, now, if we test this jumper TP5, we should be seeing 5.33. We see 5.322. The reason is we've slightly come off in adjustment from this trim pot right here. So if we hit the base of this trim pot, you'll see that we're overvalued. But as that, as that voltage passes back through to this jumper and then essentially over to the oscillator, um, that is effectively trimming that to exactly 5.33. Um, so power is working. That's fantastic. Now the next section is the oscillator. So we can turn this guy off and we'll hook up our scope. And hopefully if everything goes well and doesn't want to make a fool of me, then we're going to have our, uh, exactly our uh, waves on here as well. So what I'll do is so in order for the oscillator to actually kick off and run it has to be grounded at a certain point which is resistor 90 and then what we do is we measure so resistor 90 is just down here at the bottom of the screen that has to on the right side of resistor 90 we're going to have to ground uh, that to kick off the oscill uh, oscillator and then once that's kicked off we can test for the oscillation uh, points on these pins just over here at the waveforms. So what we'll do is I find it easy to ground the oscillator uh, just with say like a, I'll get a GPIO pin out. Uh, it's a decently long one. All right. So if we ground this guy to here, that guy's gonna be now firing off. So technically, should be able to see exactly and there'll be some adjustments that we need to make but if we now ground our scope over to well we can ground him to the side of this 
and what we need to do is get him in there. All right, and let's adjust our scope a little bit. So we're running in 10X. We need to look for a five volt rail and we need to adjust our timings a little bit. We might not be grounded still to our... All right, there we go. And let us just get this set up a little bit better. So there's the beginning of a saw wave. Let's adjust our inbound seconds. All right. So as you guys can see, we have a saw wave. If we flip the switch, we should have a square wave. Now it's an odd looking square, that's for sure. Let's change our divisions a little bit. So technically the square wave on this device is actually not a proper full, full flat square. And that is due to the fact that the saw wave on this makes the actual square wave. Um, so it's not a, it is a true voltage, uh, volt, a VCO where this, the square is actually a square wave, but the way that it's generated gives it this flattened, uh, sort of peaked edge. Um, at the top of this duty cycle. Uh, but that in essence gives the synthesizer the sound that is a, is a fancy. Thanks a lot for dropping in, Bobs. We'll have fun, bro. Um, yeah, that is essentially exactly where we need to be. So that's our first two tests. And as you can see, if we drop back over to, uh, so I'll move this guy. And as you can see at this point, the VCO is built and there's the tests. So there is our square as we should be sort of seeing it. Oops. All right, so we're good in that department. So what we can do is we can take this guy off and we can turn this guy off for now. All right, so we don't need any power into this guy, but let's start placing some parts. All right, and we'll turn our scope off for now. I need that. I uh, might actually do this guy a little bit. Move this guy up just a little bit more so we got some more room here. Zooming would probably help as well. Um, all right, so let's get our resistors first uh, and let's get our soldering iron out. All right, here's our resistors. Now, I've got this little tool set here which is gonna make things a little bit easier because I like to solder most of the um, through hole components that I can from the top at the start and then flip it around. Cause otherwise you gotta bend the legs for everything and then you gotta re-straighten them as you solder them. And it kind of like, I don't know, there's a bit of a toing and froing with it. And I used to do it on these kinds of boards um, when I was doing it ages ago, so Let's kind of follow the similar pattern in that. Uh, I haven't used this guy before. So let's, I don't need him to be that. Oh. Hopefully he stays still at this point. He does have this vacuum thing. How do I describe it? As a hate a wonky clamp. Yeah, this is, it's a bit of a wonky one. I might have to put something on it to sort of hold it straight for a little bit. Oh my God. Uh, even if he's just somewhat, ah, uh, he's really annoying me. 
Uh, what I'll do is bring this guy up a little bit, like that. And need something a little bit flat to put him on. He's got no sort of suction at the moment. Yeah, this may actually be more hustle than it's actually worth at this point, which kind of sucks. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll do this the other way for now until I work this bloody thing out um, and find a good way to actually use it. We'll do it my old method, which is basically using my solder. Um, my solder wire is like a base to put everything on. Um, yeah, it is what it is, so. All right, let's go through the bill of materials and work out what we're putting on first. There's our bomb. Flip over back to our bomb. And let's get our soldering iron good to go. Give our mouse a bit. Got our resistors. Got some solder wire here, which is fantastic. Maybe we can zoom a little bit. Move this guy up just a little bit so you guys can see it a bit better. All right, and let's flip over to our overhead quickly and see exactly what we need. Uh, so let's put in our 2.2 Ks first. So we need seven of them, uh, which was our first ones here. Um, there's a lot of double checking, triple checking, and quadruple checking of this kind of stuff because if you put a wrong resistor in or if you put an electrolyte cap the wrong way in, or if you put a tantalum cap the wrong way in, or if you put an IC in backwards, you're gonna blow stuff up. Um, it's not gonna be a very big blow up, but you'll get a little bit of fire out of it. And uh, you know, we try to make sure that we don't have to actually get to that, um, you know, get to that stage. So we need seven of these guys. Double check that. Yep, seven. We're gonna go into resistor 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 98, and 108. So let's follow that. What we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. So we'll put our unused resistor back. All right. And now comes the fun part of actually finding where all of those actually exist on the board. So, six, resistor 67 first, well, 67 through to 71. If we follow the numbers, there's 67. All right, as you can see, 67 is just there. He's uh, on the silk screen, he's a single dot which technically means that he needs to be folded up like these guys um, because the spacing is gonna be a little bit more difficult to get through. So usually with these ones, what I do is I'll place one side and I'll place the other side, but I'll force the first side kind of through and down until we're in as you can see up the top here whoa it's hard to balance uh, and then so on and so on so get him to sit properly so 67 68 kind of right next to him all right of course they're going to be hot all right i'm going to do it by hand like this for now and then we'll put it down later all right we want to sort of, I'll get my little pliers out so we can bring him through a little bit easier. All right, 67, 68, we need 69. Where's 69 is right there. Hard to do one handed. Need my better balancing. Yeah. Try 
trying the multiple balancing acts so I can so you guys can see what I'm doing and I can actually fine. Need seventy. Build seventy. Seventy is right next to him. So there's seventy. So now, see this is this is where things get like you got to pay attention because ninety-eight and seventy are really close to each other. The silk screen shows seventy through the middle, but 70 actually sits to the left at that point. So again, it's attention to detail with this kind of stuff because desoldering is an absolute pain in the ass and we want to avoid having to pull components out as much as possible. Um, there's 70 and we're gonna need 71, which should be relatively close to 70, you would assume. There's 71. There's 70. 71. Where are you? 71. There's 71. He goes just in front of Q10. We got two more of these guys to place, which are 98 and 108. 98, there's 108. 108 was pretty easy to find. And 98, did we say? 98, well, if we count back, there's 99. 98's next to 70. All right, cool. Hey, Willie, if you're listening, I still need that resistor, um, that resistor leg bender, that would be really helpful. I know you can get them, but you can definitely be pretty okay? All right, we'll pull him through. All right, usually what I like to do at this point is to make sure things are relatively straight and nice. And let's zoom out a little bit. I will send you the design. Um, so because this area gets relatively packed pretty easy, what we'll do is we'll actually solder in these guys now, and then we'll move to our next resin. It's, it's gonna make things a hell of a lot easier. As we Balancing act. All right, Make sure he's down. All right, we've got some solder wire. Soldering iron set 350. Let's make sure we can get these guys in. I just hit them from the top just a little bit. Get them basically parted. annoying with this wonk. Try and fix this. If I use this secondary part, there we go. Here's your brain, mate. Here's your brain. All right. Make things easier. Buzz these guys through really quickly. Yeah. Cool. They're all in. Quickly flip him over, hit the other legs.
always try and hit the leg that you didn't solder in first. Uh, otherwise, you're basically gonna let him fall through because you're hitting the same leg. Um, before you undo the work that you basically had. Those guys are all in. Fly off. Nice little peaks. All we want. All right, cool. So they're all in. Now, what we'll do is we'll clean up just a little bit. Like this little poster, I guess. So we'll put all of our resistor legs in there because otherwise things get, they basically flick everywhere. Uh, so let's take all them off. Don't want them flicking everywhere. Uh, we use our side cutters because they are going to get us the closest to the leg that we actually want. All right, cool. So there's our 22s. What did we start with, 22s? 2.2, sorry. There's our 2.2s 2, 2 in. Nice as they can be at this point, which is fantastic. A um, little bit of blood come through, but that, that's all good. All right. Let's get our next guys in here. So next on the list is, so now we can mark this guy off. Seven. I usually go with the biggest numbers first in terms of how many thing, like components to actually place down. So as you'll see on here, there's 11 10Ks next. So probably do those, then 100Ks, and then everything else after that. So let's go find some 10Ks. And place all them. There's our 10Ks, first on the pile. Fantastic, fantastic. All right. We need 10 of these, if I recall correctly. 11 of these. All right. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Cool. All right. Get him in the pile. And let's find out where we got to put these guys. So. R47, R61. Forty-seven is up here. He's flat, not looped, which is makes things a hell of a lot easier. Um, we say sixty-one next. Sixty-one, sixty-four. There's sixty-four. There's sixty-one. One, 64, okay, so again, 64 and 65, if you don't read the silk screen the right way, you're gonna be mixing up. So 64 is actually going down and 65 is going right. So 64, you looped in, pause in, uh, well, 64 and 65 are the same, so, okay. That's probably not the best example as to exactly that issue occurring, but get my, uh, get the point. Five goes in. Straighten up 65 just a little bit without getting him in there because he's kind of overhanging a little bit. Good. Then we need 60, so it's a 65, R94, 96. There's 96, there's 94. 
Alright, nine he falls in. Kind of can fit him just a little bit better, but we'll get that second. 96 is after him. Get both of those guys just a little bit better. That guy's in better now. And this guy doesn't want to come through. I'm pulling the wrong leg. No. That's oh, definitely him. All right, cool. So 96, 98, sorry. 94, 96 are in. We need a couple more of these 10Kers. 97, 109. Ninety sevens right next to us. Easy. Wants to get in there. And ninety. So we said what was that? Ninety seven. Yep. And one oh nine. Oh nine is going to be. There's ten, eleven. So nine right there. In. With this one, we'll face the north side of R109 uh, closer to the board and leave the leg outside open a bit because we have another resistance backing up and basically want to do our best to touching, touching resistors uh, to create shorts. So, got three more left of these. So, 112, 115, and 116. 112, there's 111, so 112 is here. Again, we'll go east side to the board and west side high. And we need some of our guys in the third. And that was 12, 15, and 16. There's 16, he's flat, so we'll just make him L bend over just a little bit easier so he doesn't have to look in. Great. Easy. And 15 as well, 115. So there's 13, there's 14, 15 is next. Right. So that's 11 parts that we need to get in to the actual board before we start our next part. So let's get those guys soldered in. Relatively forward. Just want to hit the edges. Oh, sorry, just a tape in for us. Moving. Here, they're all in, they're all in, they're all in. This guy up here needs to go in. He's in. Both through a little bit better. Okay, that should be all of them. Oh no, 97 needs a little bit. That sort of flow down. All right, cool. They're all ready to be soldered from the other side. Do my best to show you exactly what that looks like. They would, they would that a little bit. In. 
Now, there's some funky legs in there, so we're gonna straighten it up before we do anything so I can actually get the solder in there. these relatively quickly. I have to chuck them. get pretty warm when there is a lot of electronics on in your oh. Alright, almost done with these guys. Get them snipped off and ready to go. But they all look pretty good. Good. more. Alright, it's going to be easier to actually just snip a few legs off here. It's hard to kind of get to those guys, so do that. It needs to be redone. Well, just up a little bit. way for being able to get the soldering iron in there otherwise otherwise you start creating like like leg bridges and stuff like that and dumps it. I try and avoid mess wherever possible in these things it's such a tiny component makes it going to debug if things are all sort of together oh kind of makes sense Alright, a few more legs to slip off. Alright, these two need to go in. And we need to hit, there's probably one cold joint in there that we need to PD. Alright. And I'm almost running out of this solder, but I do have a fresh batch. Yeah, so this guy needs to be hit. This guy needs to be hit. Alright, look for cold solder joints. We look pretty good, no worries. Alright. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Clean up a little bit as we go. Alright. Well, how do we look? Pretty damn good, actually. Everything's nice and flat, which is what we want. Look for big blobs coming through, technically touching anything they shouldn't be. All looks pretty good. All right, cool. So, put our next components down. Unwind this guy a little bit more. All right, what do we need next? We'll mark that guy off. 10K is done. 22K next in R10 and R11. Easy, we'll get that guy in. We'll get a few in on this. 22K. Okay, that's this guy. Double check that that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing. 22K RC, yes, in 110 and 111. Wait. On 10. So these guys are just packed in a little bit here. See what I mean by this is like a really busy area. Um, 
being like, you know, extra kind of vigilant in this area is really kind of needed. You know, I mean, obviously be vigilant throughout the whole sort of deal, but this area is really tightly packed and I've had to desolder parts out of this VCF before and hands down it was like annoying, very annoying. So 110 and 111. Who is next on the list? Mark those guys off. Uh, let's do 47, because there's only a single one of those. 47K RC, yep, that's this guy. In 46, we'll mark him off anyway. To the other pile. This was resistor 46, which oh you. And he looks like he is controlling resistor. That's that um and geometer. Alright, if he wants to go in nicely, that would be nice to squish him in there. Alright, cool. And there's six. Uh, 100k, so let's do those next. Let's do 20. These are hundreds. All right. That's three, four, five. And six. All right. We need to go into R66, R72. 66 should be around here somewhere. 65, so that's 66. side low. Uh. All right, there's 66 in. You need 72, 73. 72 is, so there's 73 who's going up to and 73. Is in. It's seventy two as well. Should be relatively close to it. Neighbor. Three. There's old seventy two. There's seventy two. Just high left. Right. Seventy two. Three. Ninety nine. One. One. Three. 99 is in the middle somewhere. Sure. Oh, there he is. Ninety nine. Probably throw it if he wants to. Okay. And one one three was it? One one yeah, one one three, one one four. Be on the right side. Yeah, so 113 is this way. And 114 is kind of next to him. And we only have one more. All right, cool. So there's just one more. Uh, it's two more 220s, but let's just get these guys folded in now. All right. Oh, those two have been. These two right next to each other. 
sorry if I'm blocking the camera, but this guy's in. And threes in. We'll go in. Just one for oh, sorry, 46 up the top. These guys are good, 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 good. 99 is usually like my sort of method for finding which ones need to be done is just run the solder wire kind of over the resistors. It was really thick. That's kind of going to give me the best without having to eyeball exactly which ones are which. All right, so all those guys are in. Let's flip them over and get him folded in. All right. Find the resistors are like definitely the most painful part about building these. Um, there is a lot of them. Uh, diodes as well. There's a lot. Um, but got to do it. Want to build the synth? You need to put in there. All right, most of those are in. These final guys are in. Yeah. Right, that looks like every leg is pretty much in. Cool. Let's get this snipped up. When I built the first one, I had to get to put all the jumper leads on as well, because in the original schematics, the jumpers are um, jumpers are a part of the board, so certain areas will jump um, just with wire straight over to another area. Um, so I had to place about 70 jumpers at the start, which was a bit tedious as well, but I'll save, I saved the um, boringness of having to do that. So you place it up, place the parts, test the parts, put to the section. Right. Good. Next go back off. All right, and the last two resistors, this section, uh, we're looking pretty, we're starting to get pretty packed up now. This is where we're starting to get busy, especially with the resistors. Then we got to fit transistors and caps in there as well. So our last part, we can mark off right to the side. So they've all been done. Uh, now, resistor 62 and 63 are our 220s. Yep. 220 KRCs, yep, all right. 62 and 63. And two of these. All right, there's all of our resistors for this section. So 62, be up here somewhere, there's 62. So I know for a fact 62 is our forward DC bias coming in from the um, oscillator section. So this oscillator drives the, the saw and the square as we saw earlier and pushes these in via R62 into the filter. Um, so R62 is an interesting measuring point in case you have any issues with this kind of stuff. You need to measure the uh, forward DC bias at R62, which is supposed to be around eight points something volts, if I recall correctly. Um, there's 62 and 63, right? Yeah right next to it. All right. Let's just hit those guys real quick and we're done with our resistors. And oh, this guy wants to be a little bit more 
things get into. So. Then put them over and hold the room in. Alright, there's all of our resistors done for this section. We haven't burnt ourselves yet. Good. Had some interesting mishaps with the soldering iron. Uh, it cost me a couple of nice burns. Um, all right, so as you can see, starting to get very packed up into this section. So what we'll do now is get our capacitors, but before that, I'm actually gonna have a sip of water. Um, and we'll go through how we usually place these capacitors because it's pretty important to make sure that they are if they're an electrolytic cap, it needs to be the right way. If they're a film cap, they are not polarized, so they can go in either way. Um, and that's first, and then that can be second. <laughs> All right, almost ready. All right, let's do these caps. So, what do we need? We need one, two, three, four, five, six different caps. Let's whack up the build guide quickly because I'm pretty sure it says exactly the same thing as what I just mentioned before. There's the bomb. These are the six that we need. And the build guide tells us that we should do the metal caps first. So let's follow the build guide. All right. So first off is a 183, which is our little guy just here. And he's going to go into C18. And we don't need that bag anymore because he's got nothing in it. C18 is just here. Place a few of these film caps right now because it's easier to sort of do that. Um, we can't hit these guys from the top. Oh, we can slightly hit the film caps from the top because they do sit up a little bit more. So let's find what we need next, which is our triple three. There's three of those. Where's our 333 KTPs? Make sure, yep, got the right ones. That will be our other ones. We need three of these guys in C19, 24, and 26. We can go back in the not used pile. Nine, so what do we have? What do we have? 19, 24, 26. C19 is here. And 24 is there's 26. So we can he wants to go in somehow. Get in your hole. All right, 26 done. And what do we say? C9's 1924. 25 is just there. So 24 is going to be there. All right, cool. Right, let's solder these guys. Keep them up just a little bit high. To be honest, I might actually just hit all these guys from the back. They tend to stay in relatively well when you flip them over anyway. Um, they don't sort of hold down. They're pretty light in comparison to the electrolytic caps, which will kind of like slide down a little bit. So you've got to bend them a little bit more. All right. Close in. In. 
in. Okay, that guy slid down, as you can see, riding very high. So what we need to do is, what I typically do in this situation is grab some tweezers, hit the same leg as before. Uh, over this other way. Is the low guy just here. What I do is I grab the either leg, it really doesn't matter, but we can just grab the leg that we hit before and drag him through and hold for a second. All right, that guy's in. Bring the other leg of that. All right, there's the film caps. Well, most of the film caps, we've got one or two more, but let's put these legs off. And as well, as well, We're looking pretty good. All right, we've got a couple more, or just one more film cap to put in. And that is gonna be, so we can mark this guy off. So we just did these two, they can get marked off. And we've got two uh, 0.1 microfarad 104 JTP, which need to go into 25 and 27. Take those guys. All right, 20, what did we say? 25, 27, yep. 25 is, as you can see on the silk screen for this, it's pretty easy to find these caps because they are marked as that on the silk screen. There's 25, let's squash him in there. So see, now we're starting to get really packed up, so you don't really want to be desoldering too much in this section. And 27 was the other, that's going to make a little sort of pull in here. Oh yeah, okay. 27, this guy here, I've got a little bit of solder in that, that hole already, so where's my wick? I'm using wick right here, aren't I? Get the wick out. Make sure we know which one 27 is. Kinda to the left of R115. I think it's gonna need to hit him with a bit of wick. Solder. There's a little bit of solder in the hole. Yeah, that was him. All right, we good. So now we can fit this guy back in. He was C27. Sometimes there's mishaps. You clean up as you go and don't leave it to the end. It makes it a lot easier. All right, there's the two films. Get these guys soldered in. couple of electrolytics to put in. These are polarized. The actual layer, outer layer of the cap is shown which way you should be putting them in. The other way to tell is the long leg versus the short leg. Long leg is positive, short leg is negative. So, mark those last film cap off. Now we need two 10 microfarads, 16 volts. That's one volt. 16 volt, 47. 10 microfarads, 16 volt, which is 100 MDD. Is that what we got? 100 MDD. 100 MDD. All right, C16 and C30. And we've only got two of those, so we can put that in the 
throw out Kyle now. Kyle, right, as you can see, negative leg is marked. Positive leg is long. We need to place this into C16 and C30. There's C30, positive leg to the positive. Positive is marked on the silk screen. See that? We'll place him into C30. Squish him down to the base. He should relatively easily hold himself in there when we flip him over. Uh, so that was 30 and we need to go into C16. We look for the little circles, there's C16. Positive leg to the south. Beats him in. We'll get a couple more caps in before we do some soldering. So he's been placed. And C28 is a 47 microfarad, 16 volts. That's this guy here, which is 470 MDD. He needs to go into C28. All right, all right. Getting there, boys. We're getting there. Getting there. This is densely packed, this area, so it takes time, but when you see that resonant wave come through on the oscilloscope and you know you've done well, it's... So, this is our 47 microfarad. As you can see, the designation on there. And he is going to go into C28. Probably going to be to the right somewhere. Yep. Positive leg to the north. Push him down in there. All right, and mark him off. Now we need seven of these uh, one microfarads. So let's solder what we've got now. Gonna get busy again. A little bit easier. All right, lock him into place, soldering iron. Two caps there, two caps there, right those guys are done, snip the legs, once you get into the routine, sorry, the rhythm with this, it's yeah, it starts to become a lot easier, the first little bits are a little bit tedious but then you sort of get into your little, uh, rhythm and start flying through the parts, uh, but again, and again, you just got to make sure that you don't run too far ahead because we will be debugging for a while after that if you place something wrong. All right, we need a bunch of these guys now. Um, of course, Mauser decide that they are going to put these in the most annoying, like, tape cardboard. I don't know what you call it, but these are... I'll show you what I mean. To get them out, you kind of have to like slowly pull one way and then the other and the other and then basically without trying to like make a huge sticky mess get them out okay there's one out and you see all the residue that it leaves on there i mean like <laughs> i don't want to complain too much because there's way more things in the world that you about when you just have to solder in a few of these that becomes annoying it becomes really annoying so let's do what we need to first and just get 10 i think it was 10, wasn't it seven seven of these are um all right so there's one two three four five six seven we'll rip there put this guy away All right, let's get all these bad boys out. I'll try and do them as sort of fast as possible without making that much mess. Oh, pain in the ass. Pain in the ass. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there. One more. Now we have to clean the little legs off a little bit. All right. Um, as long as they get Get in that hole, get in your hole. As long as you get in your hole, you're all good. All right, so first one is C13, C14. C13 is going to be left a little bit somewhere. Uh, where is C13? 
Oh, he's gonna be up the top somewhere. Yep. So there's C13. He's in. Let's do C14, which is kind of right next to him. Pull this really annoying residue garbage off. So annoying, man. I wonder if there's like a little solution you could dissolve it in, like dissolve the legs in and then just basically, I don't know, it comes off. Uh, so 14, 15, all kind of next to each other. ISO, isopropyl. Yeah, I've seen that. I've got a bunch of ISO next to me. I guess, I mean, like the residue is so sticky. Yeah, I'd give it a try, but... I tend to just like rub them down the fingernail sort of thing and just pull as much as possible. Anyway, uh, C15, well, thing. C15, all right, they're both in. So annoying, man. <sighs> Keep the area relatively clean. It's Comes really messy if you don't. When I first started soldering, it was like, I was so excited and like, you know, placing all the parts in and everything like that. This was, you know, like 15 years ago. And my workbench was just an absolute chaotic mess after like every little bit. So over the years, I've learned to like, be as organized as possible, really. All right. Uh, C17. Be up the top somewhere as well. About 20. Oh, that was still big. 15. 17's kind of in the middle here. And long leg is north. It is north. Yeah, so the residue's like doing its really annoying job right now and not letting me get the part in very well. All right. And fix that. C17. In. Alright. Go. Have him in there. And who we got next? A few more of these guys. 22, 23. There's 23. 22 should be. Let's put in 23 now. Long leg is south. Goes in. There is 22. Resistor, to, sorry, transistor 22. There's a little circle with a 22 in there. D19, three. Right, here comes the fun part because it's so bloody packed in. Where is it? That was 22. I said it was 22. Was 22, yes. Where is 22? Where is 22? Oh, you're in here, son. Wait, did I already place 22? I'm feeling like I'm my dog. I think the last was 29, so let's place 29 because we found him. And where is 22? 22, 22, show yourself 22. See a lot of uh, transistors that we have in place, which is right. 20, 21, oh, 22. You had a little bit of bloody, look at that. That's really annoying. So just here, there's a little bit of bloody solder over him. Now he shows himself. All right, 22, long leg to the east. Sorry, to the west. All right, so they're ready to go. Keep them as flat as possible. We flip it, hopefully they don't. Um, all right, we're kind of good. Now, let us get these guys in. All eggs are really close to each other with this, so lots of big. These guys as well. And 
So that's the top ones done. There's the middle ones. Got a little bit of flux on the board. I'm not too worried at the moment. But again, because this section is quite dense to pack, we'll hit it with a PCB cleaner. Probably before we power it on, um, we do the test just to make sure. Because when you get like a little bit of solder, uh, solder splashes, or box solder splashes as well, and chances are it probably won't be. It'll be fine, but it can lead to bridging, uh, which can lead to shock. Can lead to way more hours debugging. Um, obviously, I like to freak at the forums for this to see what other people, you know, if there's any other issues, either stuff I can potentially help out with, if I, you know, if I've done that section or I had an issue here or I've had an issue in that section. And pretty much the first thing that everybody says is, is your soldering job any good and have you properly everything up? A lot of cold solder joints, uh, flux splashes and um, solder bridges fire. Bad soldering is typically what a lot of people run into. So take your time, make sure your solder Soldering is good. All right, so there's all the caps. Have a look. We're getting pretty dense. We're looking pretty good. Let's do a quick visual check to make sure everything's nice, which kind of looks pretty good from this view. Just straighten some of these caps up a little bit. Got to put some of these um, trim pots in as well, so for potentiometers, so a little bit of fitment to go. All right, cool. So. We have marked off all the capacitors. Now, according to the build guide, let's go over to the build guide. The build guide tells us we need to put a diode in next. So let's just may as well fit him in the electrolytics and then the transistors, which is relatively packed in. So let's see where we, we need diode 24 and that's a 4148 and that's gonna go into D20. Let's get him in there, uh, which is one of these guys. 4148. We'll get him to the side for now. And then we've got a bucket load of transistors to put in. And once we do that, Almost ready to do some testing. All right, diodes, for those of you following along who haven't done electronics before, uh, diodes will flow positive to the negative and they will not flow negative into positive. So it has to be placed the right way on the silk screen because if it is not, then voltage is not getting past this section. The purpose of a diode is to block or flow. And if we're facing positive to the negative side, there is no voltage coming through. So diode 24 is we need to go, which is up the top here. And on the silk screen, as you can see, diode 24 just up here, the band, the negative band is heading to the left. It's actually very, kind of a little bit hard to see, but can you see the triangle is heading to the left and the band is on the left of that. So. That's the way that we are going to place our band. We're going to fold the legs. We are going to put that into here. May as well hit him with some solder quickly. guy seated in from the front, quickly hit him from the back. All right, and move that leg and that leg. 
All right, now comes the fun part of getting the trannies in there. Transistors. Transistors. All right, what do we need first? Let's place the most first. And the most at this point is our 536s, which we don't have. Remember 536s, we've got 1815s, which are these guys here. So there's 10 of these to place. Let's put these guys in first. So let's have a look at what we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, transistor go away. Well, that, that set can. All right, on, as you can see, hopefully you can see the designation on these. But obviously you need to check to make sure. Oh, this is hard to sort of see. Maybe you can see, yeah, the C18, uh, C1815 designation on there. I don't it's really hard to see on camera. But anyway, um, I like to place these in a kind of certain way as well. Um, you have to follow the silk screen as well. So you'll see all the different holes for the transistors and you'll see the flat side and then the curved side that have to be placed in that way. Um, but as you can see, these transistors that I've placed already are placed relatively high and it makes it easy for you to get your either your oscilloscope in there or your multimeter in there so you can do testing if you need to. If you place them super flat on the board, it makes it A, harder to remove them if you have to and B, an absolute pain because you have to do most of your testing with the board flipped over this way. So let's place these guys in. Um, we'll get all these 10 in straight away. And that is into Q11, Q13 and 14. Q11 is in the middle there. These you have to kind of split the legs just a little bit so they'll slide in. So the Q11. Being a pain in the ass, doesn't want to go in. <sighs> okay. So open your legs up just a little bit more to get in there. Oh, all in the context and this. All right, cool. So he's high, really high at the moment, but we're gonna just slide him just down a little bit more. We want him to stay relatively high, as you can see. Um, it's gonna make things a lot easier. So that was 11, we need 13 and 14. There's 13 and he needs to be placed with flat side towards the south. And we need to place 14. There's 14 is kind of right next to him. Again, flat side to south. I'm kind of keeping them as you can see, like almost at the top of the cap level. Hey, come on camera, give me some justice here. And that was 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So 15 is kind of just above. We just want to just, yep, good enough. 16 is right next to him. 17 is right next to him too. So those are really easy. Place those guys all relatively up high next to each other. And 17, all flat sides to south. All right, we need 18, 19, and 20 as well. 18, 
Where's 18? So there's 19, 18 is just above. Boss, he doesn't want to go in. There's 18. 19 is right next to him and so is 20, which makes it easier for us. Nineteen and twenty, and there's one more after that. I think it's twenty-four, maybe. Let's have a quick look. Twenty-three, actually. All right. The legs of these like create a bit of a resistance between the solar, the um, actual PCB. Um, inlets, which means that they kind of stay in there when you flip them over to solve them. And we need to get in 23, which is just the right. Yeah. Alright, so let's get those guys soldered in. This should be relatively easy because kind of hits. So, what I usually do is kind of hit the middle leg and then push the inner legs in just so they're nice and straight. We'll hit the middle leg as an example. And then we can push these in as we do them. Now with, with heat and some of these new old, new old stock parts, and specifically some of the transistors are very, very sensitive to heat. So soldering, you've got to be quick. You can't put a lot of heat on the legs. Chances are you probably won't do that much. You won't do damage, but some of them can be a little bit more uh, sensitive than others. And if you hold that solder iron to the leg a little too long, you will damage that resistor and it becomes a pain to A, get out and B, debug to work out exactly where your issue is. Just a, a quick hit. Uh, and give it maybe a second, half a second before you put the soldering iron back to the next resistor leg as well. There's, I'll give it a rest just for a second in there. Middle didn't go that well. All right, cool, we could. Yeah, you want it. You don't want to be too long on these legs. You want to give them that little bit of a break in between. I think these 1815s are not too sensitive. I think the 2291s are a hell of a lot more sensitive. They're a dual uh, package transistor, and I've seen on the forums a lot of people. I think a lot of people had issues with those ones um, and heat. Alright, um, get this guy here. Almost done with these guys. Might actually, uh, might actually flip the board this way. Come in through the front side a little bit because a bit of obstacles. All right, almost got all these guys in. We all accept that it's not clear. That's your reality, and that's our reality. If for you, sure, those solder pegs are good. All right, last one. Forget it. And if for you, the expectation is you get all the answer from us, forget it. Almost done. And last one. A little bit busy in there. 
All right, cool. So just inspect our work. Everything's sort of sitting at the right levels. I'll show you a sort of side view, I guess. As we look through, we can see everything sitting relatively high. All the joints look pretty damn good. That's gonna make debugging if, fingers crossed we don't have to, but if we need to, it's gonna make things a hell of a lot easier than working from the bottom of the board. Because when you work from the bottom of the board, if you don't have a reference board sitting there to tell you exactly where things are, you'll be flipping it over, like, consistently. So let's get the legs, these snipped off. All right. The little legs on this too. So I don't know, I find it kind of easier to just do these on the board and then just tip the board over. Uh, clean the solder mat after that because these are a little bit of a pain to like get you wrapped around. All right, almost done. Get our next transistors in. All right, so we'll flip that over. Get a couple of those legs off. Oh, we missed one off two. All right, he's looking good. Let's just clean that guy up a little bit. Makes things a hell of a lot easier. Clean as you go. I've got a, um, I got a funny story. Once I was like soldering really late at night. Um, I used to solder at the place that I worked because they had all the equipment set up and I hadn't like purchased any of it. I had like an electronics room where I could go and actually do it. So I'd stay back, you know, later at night. And then to one night it was like, I don't know, like 11 o'clock at night and I'd been soldering for hours and I cut a resistor leg and I didn't realize, but it flipped up and landed perfectly in my ear. Like not right in through to like the eardrum, but it basically created like this sort of bridge between my like uh, ear cartilage. And I started like having this like weird pain in my ear. Like I was touching, I'm like, oh, ah, that really hurts. What the hell? And I went like this for like two hours. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with my ear? Like something's up with me. And then I went to the bathroom and I looked and I could just see this resistor leg like bridged to my ear. And uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was an interesting, that's why I don't just like willy nilly snip them and because they just fly everywhere. All right, cool. So we can mark off those. So there's all of our 1815s done. Now we've got two 733s. These are PNP transistors and they need to go into Q9 and Q10. So let's get our 733s uh, here and let's go into Q9 and Q10. Make sure we've got what we need. 733, 733, very good. All right, transistors here. And we go into Q9 and Q10, right? That's what it tells us, Q9 and Q10. Q9 is going to be just there and Q10 is next to it. Right. And flat side is going to the east. So, Let's make sure we get that in there the right way. That's Q9. Keep him relatively high. And let's put in Q10. Right next to him, again, flat side to the east. All right, now, those guys are good. So we'll mark those off. We won't solder them just yet because we've still got three more transistors to put in. And that is 12291, which is a double FET. 
uh, sorry, a double like pain peas. So it's a double package and you'll see what that looks like in a sec. So let's find our 2291, which I think is in here. If I recall correctly, I'm gonna dump out what's in here. There's a bunch of transistors or a whole bunch of different sections. Some little op amps, the uh, headphone amplifier I see. This is a 2291. And it is a dual package transistor. It can be put in either way because they are technically um, offering the same input. So the same base, um, base collector and emitters in the way that it's designed. So, but I think from, I'll go back to the bill guide and just double check, but I'm 90% sure. Uh, well, there's Q22. So we got to place him in there. Light side is facing north on the PCB, but let's just see what the build guide says. May as well get out our other ones too. Two 1583s as well. So there's one and one that I've desold it previously, which I think should still be completely fine, but we will find out is not. Our testing is probably not going to work otherwise. All right, so these are the last three transistors. This is just to find have some water, one sec. Who's down? Who's up? What's going on? All right. So let's go over to the bill guide. This is not a formula. And well, so first one is Q22. Q22 is just there. So on the build guide, he is there and his package is facing as I see properly. So the designation is facing towards south on the build guide. So we'll just follow what the build guide is. Make sure he's a 2291, that's what we've got. 2291 and he goes into Q22. Let's get him in there. And gotta split this guy's legs a little bit, otherwise he'd be harder to get in. and do this so you guys can see as well. I've got to split legs a little bit more. I mean, absolute pain to get in. Not too much, just a little. Just a little. All right. Better. U22, you need to go into the plot. You need to stop. Are we almost better to place Q22 first, I reckon? Way easier to see exactly what's going on. All right. I think we're good. All legs are in. Yep. All right. So let's keep him up somewhat high as well. All right. He's in. Now let's place two 1583s in Q12 and Q21. So Q12 and 21. So 21 is right there and right there and 12 is right there. So let's go. I oh, no. just went in relatively easy. Flip over and make sure. Yep, he looks really good and our final transistor. What's going on? Who's up? Who's up? What's going on? Who's down? All right, he needs to go into Q21, and that is right here. I'm gonna have to split legs open a little bit more. All 
All right. Get that in there. <laughs> uh, this section is a pain. Come on. Alright, that should be a little bit. Oh. Alright, there we go. Make sure all those legs are in. Yep, we look good. Keep him relative high. Alright, let's get these guys soldered in. And then we are almost done. So, again. Quick on the legs with this one, give it a break. Don't want too much heat. And we can it. Right, so there's our first transistor in. Get our second one in. Before we do that, because I've got short legs, because I had to desolder one of those previous build, might have to hold. And in. And we are almost there. We've got a couple more here. Oh. Right now, I'll kind of get him right in there. All right, he's good. Got enough egg. Oh. Right, he's in. And these two here. Boys, we are, we are close. All right, let's remove these legs. So just mark those off because they are done. They're done, they're done. And then we've just got, oh, diode's done too, should mark him off. And we've just got one, two, three, four more parts. Those are trim pots. One trim pot, one resistor. All right, they're all good. A little bit of a clean up in here. Thanks. Let's flip him over. A little bit of a tap, make sure that our job looks really good, which it does. And let's clean this guy. Got a good area to work from. All right, all right. Take this guy away for a second. And now the build guide's gonna tell us to put in the trim pot, I'm guessing next, which is this guy just here. And then our, um, I think it's two potentiometers, it's three potentiometers, one trim pot. So four parts to go in. So let's put the trim, trim pot in first. Yeah, trim as potentiometers doesn't really matter. And then we are done on this section and we can test it. So trim pot is here. Now, we're gonna have to test these. 
because they've all just been bagged together. They need to be exactly the right resistance. We're gonna have to test each one before we put them in. I'll tell you why, because I did put in a, I think I put in a, no, what was it? Instead of a, a 50K potentiometer, I put in a 500K and that's what actually caused my voltage issue, which blew the diodes. So I didn't test it before I put it in there. I just assumed that it was a 50K. And that was a really big mistake because taking these things out is a pain in the ass. So let's get our trim pot in there. So it's a 504, 500K and it goes into TM3. So let's get that in. These guys are relatively straightforward and easy to put in. What they look like, easy to fit. Is this going to go here? When I say easy to fit, easy to fit when nothing else is in the board. All right. Got to make sure those legs are aligned. Almost in. Oh my god, these are sometimes annoying actually to fit in. That front leg won't go in. All right, he's in. Fitted, good to go. We'll solder him in a second. And let's test these quickly. So put that to the side. Need solder. We need our multimeter. And we are going to put it into resistance mode. Going to put it on the side there. And going to find out exactly which ones we need. I can tell you for a fact, this guy's going to be VR4 because he's got six legs, six legs on VR4. So we know who VR4 is, but We'll do the due diligence and test anyway. Um, so let's have a look. VR4 is a 50K um, linear potentiometer. So if we unravel these wires and let's have a look at this. So if we measure the resistance across this guy, you guys can't see that what you can actually see. So at far right, he's at 44K, so it's pretty close. Sorry, that was at far left. Okay, so far right, he's at absolutely zero ohms, basically no resistance at all. Far left, he's at 50K, so he's good. So let's place him on the board and he is VR4. Let's double check that. VR4, 50K linear. Yep. So he's going to go into this spot here. Of course, one of his legs is bent. Find him a little bit. Just fine. They get bent in shipping, unfortunately. Get banged around a little bit. All right. And they've also got like residue on them as well. So we'll my hands, I felt like a kind of a little bit residue on whatever. Um, so let's make sure that we can get this guy in without damaging anything. This cap is annoying me and is in the way. Cross. in all right he's in as you can see now he's going to be our test point for this next test as well so he is the filter i think filter resonance 
I'm 99% sure he's the Phil's resident. So we're gonna test this guy um, as our test point. All right, so now we need to get, so that was our BR4. We need two 50K logarithmics into BR3 and BR5. So let's have a look at what we got. So we'll spin far right and measure our resistance across this. So he's 50K, there's one. And let's just make sure down the other way is absolutely zero. Or, you know, barely anything at all. Might have to measure from the in. Oh, why are you annoying me? Okay, so he's zero to the far left and, sorry, to the far right and 50 to the far left. All right, he's good. He's gonna go into VR3 and then the next one's gonna go into VR5. All right, get this guy in. Doesn't wanna go in 100%, so we're gonna have to Make sure he does. All right, he's in. And we'll just measure one more for good charm, good luck, whatever you want to call it. Let's spin him all the way to the right. Should be seeing zero from these two. Yep, all the way to the left. 50k. All right, cool. So we'll put these guys away. The bag. Yeah. Then we've got to solder in our trim pot and potentiometers. So we'll put that guy in. Slide. This guy is VR5. Yep. All right, nice and solid, looking pretty good. Sitting flat is what you want. Now let's solder these guys in. I'm gonna quickly clean my hands because they're really uh, residue-y. So give me a sec. Got these little pads, alcohol swabs. All right. Now, with these, as you can see on the other one I've soldered in, I like to solder the big um, the big base legs just on either side because it makes you fill the whole thing in and you do have to remove them it makes the whole thing an absolute pain in the ass so all the pins have to be soldered in you know obviously the whole way through um, but each of the top sides I like to just hit the sides a little bit just to keep them in there um, so let's do that we'll get our multimeter out of the way All right, get these guys in. We'll, we'll hit this trim pot first down here. And my soldering iron's turned off for not using it. Yeah, gotta give it a sec. All right, gives me a chance to have some water. So yeah, we are nearly ready to test, which is pretty damn fantastic. Um, there was a lot of parts in this one and I guess the next two sections like the VCF, sorry, the envelope and the VCA, they're going to be a little bit quicker. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of parts. 
So it takes some time. Uh, all right, soldering iron is ready. So get this trim pot in first. Now let's get these legs in. I don't bother clipping the legs on these uh, potentiometers. I don't really. Oh, I haven't test fitted this into a case yet. I've got a couple of cases. Uh, oh. Um, yeah, if the test fit for the case requires me to actually make sure those legs are chopped off, then we'll do that at that point, but I don't really need to. Sure those flow nicely. All right, and that guy as well. Let's hit the sides of these. Just here on the side. Keep them sort of rounded in there and relatively stable on the side. Yep. Good. All right. Almost the last one here. And our last leg. Filter is done. So, next fun part, real fun part, is gonna be testing. And hopefully, let's just double check the build guide. I'm pretty sure we are ready to go. Take a moment, check your work, make sure nothing is missing. It's no solder shorts or splashes. If you're satisfied, then it's time to test the BCF. So, let's have a look. I probably wouldn't mind hitting this with a little bit of PCB cleaner. I mean, it, it's actually looking pretty damn good, so I'm not too worried. Uh, just double check everything. And yeah, we're gonna do some testing and this is what our testing looks like. So we need to get the oscillator running again. Then we need to set our scope um, for a much lower impedance this time. Uh, otherwise, we won't be able to pick up exactly what we're supposed to be looking for here. And yeah, we're going to test exactly how we see the waveform resonance uh, working. So, give me two secs. I'll be right back. Just going to go to the loop and let's do some testing. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, let's get set up for testing. Let's make sure our workstation is clean. First things first. Make sure everything's clean. Uh, we don't need our soldering iron anymore, so he can go off and go back here. Now, what we need is our scope and Probably our multimeter just in case. So let's get our scope set up. A 
I'll zoom in a little bit with this as well. And here's our scope. All right. Make that guy a little bit bigger. All right, so to do this test, we need to fire some power in. So power will come in here. We're gonna run our oscilloscope. So we need to ground R90. So first things first is check that our oscillator is actually running. So we'll go back and do that test first. And then we're gonna test at these junction points, whether or not we're seeing the waveform that we need to, which is gonna look like a saw wave with a resonant peak. All right, so first things first, let's get power in. Let me make sure this is clean too, because we don't want any shorts, that looks good. All right, so let's get some power in. Let's get our multimeter out and just double check that we've got the required voltages coming in everywhere. And I might move this guy over just a tad. You guys can see beta. All right, so first things first. Test that we've got the right voltages coming in. We do. We do. Okay. Now let's test if we've got some, we have about eight volts forward bias on this R62 as well. So if we go to ground, we do. All right, things are looking good. Probably don't need to test any more voltage right now. So let's take him off. And so we've got power coming in. Now, we need to get our scope out. So first things first, let's start the oscillator. I'm gonna ground the oscillator. That should start it off. We're gonna use our ground clip and we are going to ground our scope. Without grounding our scope, we're not gonna see anything. Ground our scope and we'll ground to the side of the case here. And let's, so this scope has a little bit of a, we, yeah, so it's got a hook. We can easily hook that in, um, but we can also, if we take it off, we've got just a normal scope point there. So and now let's just ground uh, and get our oscillator. Uh, sorry, yeah, test in. Okay, so waveforms look good. All right, next thing, we need to reset up our scope. So we'll stay grounded to the point that we are now. We'll remove our scope uh, hook and put that to the side. Now, we need to change a few things here, otherwise we're not gonna see what we need to see. First things first is, come on camera, we need to change the impedance of the scope, otherwise we're going to, we need to be looking at a much smaller voltage and current at this point. So if we are set to a 10X impedance, what we're basically gonna be doing is not being able to, we're magnifying what we're seeing times 10. We don't need to do that at this point. But what we need to do is set up to about, now what did he say on his 100 millivolt, five milliseconds. All right, so let's set up for change our impedance. Go down to about 100 millivolt. Go down to, what, how many milliseconds did he say? Five milliseconds, all right. And five, well, we don't really have, yes we do. About five. All right, so at this point, starting to see what we need and it's being affected, but I don't think we are in full scope just yet. So let's change this to 200 millivolts. 
and go to about 20 seconds. 20 milliseconds. And we're still, is that the right pin? I don't know, right pin. Uh, have a look. Double check what pin we're supposed to be on. Uh, he's testing from the far right pin. And that's where we need to be testing from. So, grounded to the case. We are seeing sine wave. We are seeing a resonant point. There we go. There we go. Now, I'm not seeing exactly how we should be because I don't think we're still grounded correct. We are grounded. The scope is running. Might need to change our... So, the frequency is changing as I'm changing this, um, as I'm changing the resonance, but still not set up 100% to get proper connection. So I might have to reground the scope. I might ground it on this side. Try that again. Needs to be grounded back over here. All right, we are almost there. Give me two seconds. I'm gonna did have this test up previously and let me have a look at I think my scope's set the right way. One second, one second. Uh, hundred millivolts on one X at twenty milliseconds. Should be seeing hundred millivolt on ten milliseconds. sec all right that's frequency that's resonance Easier if we're in a saw wave. It's a good start. We are getting resonant peaks, which is good. I don't think the scope's sitting at the right spot. Set up in one X. Yes, we are. Uh, the other reason is the oscillator isn't running again very much. I reckon the oscillator is actually um, not grounded again. So let us get out. So let's ground this guy again. He's grounded. He 
these USB scopes are sometimes a little bit average, I'm not gonna lie. I'd say we are getting pretty damn close to where we need to be. Um, but we're not 100% just yet. And that is likely due to potentially a grounding issue or this oscillator isn't running at this time correctly. We are looking at a very small we're looking at a 427 millivolt peak to peak here, um, which is a very small area to be looking into. So last time I had issues with getting the scope to look exactly the way that it should be was due to the fact that these scopes are not super accurate. Uh oh, I think we've lost uh, All right, let's test our oscillator again, just to make sure that we've got proper stuff coming through. I might've just dropped off for a second as well. So let me know if I did. I think my, my music stopped for a sec, which means my Nick friggin' dropped off for two seconds. All right, let's re get our scope back into oscillator mode. Um, and let's check, we need to go back into 10X at five volts or 10 volts, easy, uh, 10 milliseconds. Let us have a look at, yeah. All right, so let's shift him back down. All right, we're getting, getting our saw, getting our square, fantastic. So the oscillator's running, all right, so, Let's change, so let's take him off. Let's change our impedance. Go back to 1x, 100 millivolt, five milliseconds, and I'm gonna put this onto a scoping issue because that resonance is changing in both frequency and peak as I go left to right. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty certain that our scope is just not calibrated enough at this point in time, but that's fine. I think we're seeing what we should be seeing. I'm not too worried jump back up to 200 millivolts. We are seeing a peak to peak of about 144. Uh, let's up our frequency is really high at the moment. So I think we are getting pretty damn close to where we should be. Might even up our milli, uh, upping our milliseconds is probably not gonna help. That's the time division, so. Not fully convinced, considering we did see the right resonant piece uh, before. So I will test a bit of voltage just to make sure. Potentiometers are changing our frequencies, which is really good. First thing first is we need to check for a wrong part placement, but I'm kind of pretty confident about that. So, I know I had like mad dramas getting this set up the first time and then eventually did get it working. Uh, one sec, have a look. 
Yeah, so I had it set at 100 millivolts, 1x impedance, 20 millisecond divisions. Let's go back to 100 millivolt, 20 milliseconds, 1x impedance. It looks to me like the frequency division for this actual scope is just not locking in perfectly at this point in time. So let's get our um, multimeter out and let's just make sure that we've got some good voltages coming through. I'll just shift this guy back over a little bit. You guys can see. So from a grounded position, what have we got coming in? 3.22. Yeah, so we're getting the right voltages through. Now we're getting 6.5 forward bias. We should be getting a little higher. That could be due to frequency. So let's jump that back up. Hmm, interesting. All right, uh, so either two things. We did see pretty much what we were supposed to see at the first point when we first tested this. We're still getting a square and a saw, which is fantastic, which means our voltage is coming into the filter. Good. Now, anything wrong? No. Looking pretty good in that department. Uh, so, we should... I have a sneaking suspicion that I'm gonna have to check the schematics too, just to make sure. I'm gonna go with, it's working. And the flip side of that is it's working, but it's not working to exactly the right dimensions that it should be. So frequency is being changed by both of these, which is kind of actually pretty interesting. So, I think we're gonna leave it at that point. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna check through some of the schematics and make sure that we've got everything correctly positioned. Sorry, I'll go back through the bomb, make sure everything's correctly positioned. Uh, if we flip back over to the bomb quickly, let's have a look at the bomb. I wonder if I need to stay grounded the whole time while the oscillators. Okay, let's just do one more test. Let's just stay grounded basically the entire time at this point. So I'll grab, I've got, um, I've got to get some gator clips, which give me one sec, I'll grab. Yeah, the other thing potentially is the, oscill the oscillator isn't running 100% at this time. You have to say grounded, basically. <laughs> we clip up here. And we clip up here. But he's gonna be grounded now. Right side of our 90. And now if we have a look, what do we see? Let's have a look.
Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Let's test if our oscillator is still good. We are ground at this point, so let's change our cadence back to 10x and go to say 10 volts. Yep, we're good at that point. Oscillator is running. Now let's go back again. We could actually have an issue. Very, you know, there is potential. Uh, there will be some checking required at certain transistors. Um, and we'll, yeah, we'll have to do a little bit of debugging. Um, but let's have another look. Yeah. So are we set right? Five milliseconds, 100 millivolts. Yeah, pretty much sign in. A little bit of resonant peaks. All right, potential. Another potential is one of the transistors isn't firing. Um, and to figure out exactly which one isn't really doing its job, we'll have to do a bit of prodding around. And a bit of reading. And this is the fun debugging part. But we do have our other board. Yeah, so see, at that point, that to me is almost making exactly where we should kind of be. I'm actually not too worried about this at all. What are we looking at? Peak to peak, 300, 400, 500 millivolts. Uh, I'm gonna say this is a scope grounding problem and I'm actually not concerned. If we shift a little bit more into view, resonance is working. I can I can tell you that, but it's not giving me exactly what I was kind of hoping for. So I think we're gonna have to do a little bit of working it out. See at this point here, if we get back on the actual build guide and have a look at that. This is what we should be seeing. Keep in mind, he does have a really nice oscilloscope and I've just got a pretty El Cheapo $50 USB one. Um, he's also taking measurement in AC. My scope doesn't do AC, it only does DC. Um, you should see the different wave form changing from sinus looking to pronounce resonant peaks with different knob positions. If you see a changing waveform, you're all set, ready to proceed to the next section. I'm gonna go with we're seeing a changing waveform. I'm also gonna go with our scope is not giving us exactly what it kind of should be at this point. So that being said, I'm kind of happy to move on with this. Um, let's take some power out. So yeah, that's basically, uh, basically where we're at at this point. Um, I'll do a little bit of reading just to make sure that we're all good. I'm gonna put this down to the scope is actually just not staying calibrated in the right way that it should at this point in time. So I'm not too worried about that whatsoever. Um, but yeah, that completes the VCF. Um, our next section is the envelope. Let's just get up the build guide again. Where's our build guide? Uh, so what does the bomb tell us? Bomb tells us that the envelope's next. 
Not many parts in the envelope, so... And there's some good tests in the envelope as well. Um, we're basically gonna... Actually, do we hear sound at our envelope test first? I don't think so, I think we get that next. Yeah, so this is the SMD stuff that we have to do with the VCA. So yeah, envelope will be relatively straightforward. Maybe we can compress that into sort of two different, uh, two stream, but uh, one stream, sorry. Um, but the main test for actual sound is gonna be after this section. So yeah, all right, cool. Um, that pretty much concludes us for today. Um, VCF is is good. I'm gonna do some double checking and make sure I'm not worried at this point in time. Um, so it could be a calibration issue. Um, I'll test a bunch of the uh, transistors just to make sure we've got the right sort of readings that we should be. But yeah, I'm. I'll give the PCB a really nice clean as well, uh, just to make sure that that's all good. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Um, for those of you who stopped by and took part in watching this get built, I thank you. Um, we'll build a bunch more of the parts in next Wednesday. Um, otherwise, I'll be back on Friday to do some keyboard builds. Uh, we're actually gonna modify this guy. Um, he's currently in a plate configuration that I'm happy with, but I'm gonna go try something a little bit different. So there'll be a little bit of modifications to this guy. Um, but yeah, thanks again, everybody. Um, appreciate you being here. This is the RE303. We finished the filter today. Test came out relatively well. Not exactly how I wanted to see it, but I'm not worried again, as I said. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. and. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Um, yeah, have a nice afternoon.